I'm Asgun. And I'm Daniel. And welcome to Art Talks for Beginners. If you're wondering whether a painting is by Rubens or Rembrandt, then you're in the right place. Okay. Welcome. So this painting we have in this episode is quite an entertaining one, I can say. Mm -hmm. It's quite a fun painting to look at and comment about. Okay. Seems so, like there's a lot going on in this picture. Shall I go straight in with a... Yeah, you can do okay. that. Let's do it like this. So first things first, we're in a home. We're not in a palace or we're not in anywhere uh, fabulous. We're in a house, I guess it looks like. This could be a family, I'm mm -hmm. thinking. They are entertaining themselves with what looks like pink wine. Mm -hmm. Maybe rosé. Uh, I'm not sure I'm okay with children smoking, but it looks like there's some child smoking on the right-hand side. <laughs> it seems a little bit... Um, I don't think I'd want to go to this household right now because it seems like they're a little bit... Messy? Yeah, noisy. <laughs> There's somebody playing the bagpipes, like it's really going to be very noisy in there, I think. Okay, let's give it a little bit of a detailed look now. I suggest we start reading it from left to right. Okay. So let's start focusing on the very figure that is on the very left. Figures first. Yes. So it looks like we have what could be a mother, maybe, mm -hmm. on the left. The mother of the family, maybe. So yeah, matriarch. She's getting some of that rosé wine for herself. On her mm -hmm. left is... Uh, could be her father, could be an older husband. An older person. Looks Probably like... a, a third generation, an older generation, yeah, I can I say. So. It looks like they're cold. He's really wrapped up and he's got a exactly. rather fantastic hat on. So moving on then, yeah. we've got uh, what could be a nanny with a child, a toddler. Mm -hmm. Nice look. Like, with a very fancy bon uh, bonnet on the head there. Uh -huh. There's somebody pouring wine from a really great height, which seems like a health and safety <laughs> issue, first of all. Um, could that be maybe a younger sibling? Maybe that's one. Or a servant. Or a servant, maybe, yeah. I'm thinking they don't have servants because I see them as quite poor, but maybe. Who knows? Ah, maybe. Then this uh, woman in the middle, an older woman, um, is reading something. Or What does she read? Can you see it? It looks like the top half of the page looks like it's words, but then underneath uh -huh. there's uh, some music. Could be a song. Is yes, it it's okay. actually a song with okay. the notes and then you see the lyrics on top right. and bottom is the notes. She's teaching you... a new song, maybe. Or she's, she's singing, basically. Well, okay, she's singing. What you see okay. is singing. What you see on the table, you see that as well. On the table we have grapes, uh -huh. a half-peeled orange. Uh -huh. Is that an oyster? Yes, and that's an oyster. That doesn't seem very fitting to me. For this oyster uh, very... Maybe not for you, but no. they have typical symbols. Okay. When we just get to the painting and where it comes from and with the family, it just makes sense. Okay. But what you can see here is actually they're drinking, singing and eating at the same time. It's a party. Yeah, more or less okay. like a party atmosphere. Right. I think. Then there are four more characters left. There's a gentleman with a, one of those, um, is that like a Dutch hat? Is this Dutch? More or less. Okay. You're getting there. Yes. Yeah, I think I recognize that from somewhere else. Early reveal, yes. Okay, <laughs> sorry. He's a Dutch man. <laughs> And he's holding this pipe to this child's face, which it looks a little bit dubious. Not so right. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit... But he looks like he's enjoying it. The, the older figure looks like this is, I don't know, teaching the son about smoking, maybe, or something. He? Then we have a child, maybe, playing, um, very curly hair, playing these bagpipes up in the top right. Mm -hmm. And a very... Oh, she's, she's smiling. I couldn't tell until yeah. I zoomed in. But then it's a bit hard to see. On the right, looking directly at us, which I know is always important. Yeah. Now that we've talked about the figures and some of the objects, now it's time to reveal the story a little bit. Mm -hmm. And we should actually focus on the right side of the painting, which was actually the most disturbing part of the painting for you. Yeah. The, the man actually was teaching how to smoke to his, his child. That's very disturbing. That was a bit disturbing. He's actually. like 10 or something. He's actually <laughs> encouraging this. He's more or less teaching it, more or less, we can say. And uh, the painting takes its name from an old Dutch proverb, because it's a Dutch painting, as you have already yeah, recognized. Smelt it. And the name of the painting is As the Old Sing, So Pipe the Young. Oh, wow. Okay. What does this name give you when you think As about the old name? sing, so pipe the young. I guess it's like a, it's a sure thing that old people will sing and it's a sure thing that young people will smoke. So it's like, have, they will definitely have fun. You can't stop them, I'm guessing. A bit like this and make the connection between the old and the young. So it's actually... Like teaching? Uh, yes, exactly. And it's like bad example leads to bad conduct. 
The singing is not bad. Yes, exactly. But here in the painting, we see it's not just singing. Mm -hmm. It's just losing uh, yourself in earthly pleasures and then being a bad example mm -hmm. for the next generation, oh, okay. for your children, especially when he's teaching them how to smoke. It's kind of like the apple that doesn't fall. Exactly. This is another yeah. proverb that, or just like father, like son, you right. can say mm. as well. These kind of examples, these kind of proverbs fit very well with, with that painting specifically. You said it's a Dutch proverb, so I guess that the Dutch viewer of this immediately recognizes that. Yes, they think exactly. Like, oh, she's singing, he's piping. Okay, exactly. The, exactly. Mm. And, and this was a very common uh, proverb within the Dutch because they also believed at the time that the generations, they, uh, they affect each other quite well. Uh, it's like either through genetic traits that your father is a stubborn man, then you mm. just, you are born stubborn. That's what they believe. And also they say, how your parents behave actually affects you so deeply. Mm -hmm. And in the painting, we exactly see that because we see three different generations. You see, at, you, see you look at the old man and the old women yep. who are the first generation. They're singing, enjoying earthly pleasures. That's again. grandma and grandpa. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then you see the parents, the woman on the left, and the man teaching how to smoke on the right, they are a couple, they're okay. the second generation, and they're actually, they're more or less imitating what their parents have been doing, enjoying life, singing, and they're also teaching the same thing to their children. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the sense, of course, they're not doing something bad, you might think, in one sense, but when you look at from a more religious perspective, what they're doing is not so nice. Immoral, maybe. Yes, mm -hmm. immoral, mm -hmm. they are more engaged in uh, earthly pleasures, because they, they, yeah, exactly, heaven yeah. is not life. Instead of focusing on how they should concentrate on faith and working, which are the two pillars of Protestant faith. The virtues. Virtues, yeah. actually. That's why uh, this gives a message to the contemporary Dutch people, how they should treat their children and whatever they do is actually affecting their children mm. deeply. But you said three generations. We have grandma and grandpa, mm -hmm. then we have mom and dad, yes. then the children. And the guess, children the on the right hand, exactly. Oh, but there's a fourth child in the center. Uh, you can maybe. count it as third generation, not so important. And the woman who's taking care of it is probably a maid right. taking care of the child. And okay. there is a servant who's pouring, pouring the wine okay. to, to the mother. So they have house staff. Yes, okay. they have house staff. Mm -hmm. in, in the Dutch countries, it was quite common at the time. Okay. So. So Despite, I shouldn't read that as kind of rich, they're not rich. Not super rich, but they are not super poor either. So I believe they look like a middle class family, okay. we can say. Although the house doesn't look super fantastic, mm -hmm. they still have access to some goods that are actually quite well known to be uh, available for people who can buy them, not so easily for, for, like, the for, really for like the oysters okay. or the orange even. Uh -huh. Because the orange is, is not something that you can get in, in the Netherlands at the time, mm -hmm. in, in the low countries, we can say. So having orange, having citrus fruits, it's, it's a sign of a little bit of wealth. Okay. It doesn't mean that it's super rich maybe, but it also shows a little bit of class at least. Not something you can just get at the supermarket. No, not really. <laughs> not really at that time. Okay. And we can, we can see a lot of objects that refer to earthly pleasures or what's wrong that's been conducted in this painting. Let's look at them, some of okay. them. Okay, shall I walk through them? Uh, yeah, whatever you see. Let's just okay. focus on them. I'm drawn to the parrot. Yes, the what parrot does parrot the, mean? I mean, a parrot, you say something, you can parrot some, somebody else. So given what you said about learning from somebody else, I think the parrot learns what you teach it. Yes. So maybe that's a kind of symbol of that so, learning and repeating. Yes. It's a symbol of mimicry. Mimicry, actually. exactly. Yeah. So it just gives you a very clear sign that mm -hmm. whatever parents do, the children will learn from them and right. just do exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Caged else? birds. Uh -huh. I'm thinking um, maybe that they are stuck in that sort of structure. They can't escape the bad behavior, maybe. The More or less, that, that's, a, that's a good one, actually. But yeah. I don't think it's that deep. It's like two birds in a cage. It's like the... The very structure of the family, a male bird and a female bird, it's okay. representing the parents right. in a structure, in a cage, mm -hmm. you can say. Okay. And One then more. what else? What else do I see? The bagpipes? Yes, the bagpipe. The very bagpipe noisy. is <laughs> very noisy, but at the at the same time, it was it was not a very esteemed instrument all the time for the Dutch Lost. actually. They it wasn't <laughs> still isn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so they thought it was 
representing more or less ordinance and low class. Uh -huh. So okay. they, they thought it wasn't so nice to, to play the bagpipe. And mm. in this setting, actually, the parents are actually encouraging that as well, because the guy is playing the bagpipe, the, the, the elder son, mm -hmm. this is the elder son, Not playing the bag, bagpipe and they're singing to the music. Mm -hmm. So they're en encouraging this low class act as well. So in, in general, in overall, the painting and you have sensed that as well. The house doesn't look so so nice, not so orderly, mm. and they are just singing and teaching how to smoke. It's 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 a sense of low class, and mm -hmm. it's not an approved thing of the period. And especially when the contemporaries looked at it, they would instantly read these signs. It's a little bit harder for us to mm -hmm. see today. Now that we reviewed the objects and the story of the painting, it's, uh, it's time to reveal who painted it. Mm -hmm. This is painted by a Dutch painter called Jan Stan, okay. and he was very famous with these kind of genre paintings mm -hmm. from that period. Uh, maybe, What's a genre painting? Huh, exactly, good <laughs> question. Genre painting is a type of painting which, which shows, displays lives of ordinary people okay. doing ordinary things from their everyday life. And it can be a specific genre, like a fisherman selling fish in, in the market. Mm -hmm. Or it can be indoor setting a mom and her children playing in, in their house, okay. for example. It, it can be a specific genre or it can be an everyday life uh, topic from, from Dutch interiors. Is it but usually used to give like a message like this one is? Depends. Depends on the painter. Some of the genre painting scenes could be just just for the sake of representing indoors because mm -hmm. Dutch people uh, had the money to order these kind of paintings people from right. lower classes they had the money to pay for these paintings it's not like Italy where only high class people mm -hmm. order art mm -hmm. so uh, so when they order art they want to see something that looks like their life as well that's why we see that but some of them has more satirical or uh, educational purposes like this to give overtime. moral mm. message or, or a message that the painter wants to give. Mm -hmm. Especially this one, this guy, Jan Stein, he has a certain sense of humor which he uses in, in his paintings specifically and he was very famous for this. And what he does is that he actually uses himself and his own family in the paintings. Oh wow, it's like a self-critique. Ah, uh, you may think like this. He's, oh. It's also a bit of his signature too. He uses himself, he uses his family, which becomes a known fact in, in the market. Mm -hmm. And people order him these paintings and they want to see him in the painting as well. Okay. It becomes a signature in time. So he's somewhere here? Yes. Okay. And he also thinks that it's a good way to imitate life itself and show the environments he's been into. Mm -hmm. Uh, who do you think is, is the guy in the painting? The small boy with the pipe? No. <laughs> <laughs> Too young to paint. <laughs> I mean, he's got to be showing himself as a kind of esteemed gentleman, so I'm exactly. going to say he's the, the older boy. guy, right? With the no. cool hat on. No. <laughs> no. <He's... laughs> no. No, absolutely not. He is the guy who's teaching to smoke. Really? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Exactly. Hard to imagine. He doesn't like himself. He's got a bad body image, I think. So uh, this, like... he, he, he just puts himself in this position. It's mm -hmm. really interesting, isn't it? And but why does he painted himself with that awful grimace? Smile! And yeah. this is his signature, that's okay. why. Okay. And also laughing at that time and showing people laugh is not a good sign either because mm. laughter is a sign of foolishness right. or fault. So it is not actually encouraged. It's not like elite, it's kind of yeah, face. Yeah, exactly. Mm. You, you cannot laugh out loud, you can only just smile a little bit maybe. Mm. So there are a lot of societal rules at the time. So well, he when he does that, he just Exactly, again, putting his signature because in many of his paintings, Jan Stein himself is either grinning or it's being, giving a big laughter. Okay. So that's his signature move. And that's how we recognize him in his other paintings. The uh, you, can, you can see that, yes. Okay. It, he, it can be this smiling character. Wow, how interesting that he paints himself doing that. Yes. It's really. And not just himself, his family as well, because yeah. the, the, the guys in the right hand side, the one he teaches to smoke, is his younger son, mm -hmm. and the one playing the bagpipe is his elder son. Okay. And the woman on the left, who's enjoying the drink, is his wife. And because they are husbands and wife, you can see on her head, take a look at her head and see the ribbon. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. This silvery pinky ribbon mm -hmm. and the ribbon also on her clothes. The one and one. check the guy now. Check the guy's head. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, he has the same. He right? has the same ribbon on his head. On that means that they are just cut from the same ribbon roll. So that that's also a saying, I believe, in English. Maybe in cut American from the language. Same cloth, we say. Yeah, yeah, cut from the same cloth. Mean, exactly. Ah, but in the Dutch version is cut from the same ribbon. So, okay. <laughs> so the well. the couple is connected. So they're exactly the same. How how his behavior is not so nice and maybe can call from, lewd, no? Yeah, lewd, yeah, maybe. I mean, and the woman is exactly the same. He's teaching to smoke and the woman is like enjoying a drink and she doesn't care if the children are smoking. Mm. And the woman, the old woman, is his mother as okay. well. So many of the figures, it's his wife, his mother, his children are mm. painted. The rest, we don't know who they are. But these are his family members and he does that. It, it's hard to imagine why he puts them in this comical situation. Yeah. But it is his signature, as I say, and some of his customers even, they demanded that, they just, they requested you that. in this situation. Exactly, mm -hmm. they wanted it as well. Oh. And also there's a connection with his own life, because Jan Steen comes from a family, middle-class Catholic family from Leiden, okay. Holland, and his father used to own a brewery, mm -hmm. which he took over later on in life. So he was a brewery owner, so he was dealing with a lot of drunk people. Right low-class people fighting with each other, gambling and drinking. And he, he was drinking a lot himself and his finances were not well kept. So mm -hmm. he had ups and downs in his career in terms of finances. Mm -hmm. So himself, he himself is like this mm -hmm. as well. And when you look at Jan Steen's paintings, in, in Dutch they call a very messy home environment as Jan Steen's house. Uh -huh. They call it like this because yeah, it's, this so one is pretty orderly, well I can tell you. Okay. Many Jan Steen paintings, you don't want to be in these uh, environments, it's like super messy. Okay. Nobody cares about anything, they it's just quite enjoy it. tidy, I guess, around the floor. Uh, Comparably <laughs> tidy, I can say. Mm, when is this painted then? And this painting is from 16, uh, 1670. 1668 to 1670, okay. so it's 17th century. So their moral values and how they approach the subject could be completely different. They can only look at this and get the moral message and they can laugh about it. So mm. that can be a super light topic. Mm. If you do art like this today, you might you might be crucified with all the comments you get, right. maybe. But at that time, you might be getting away with it. It, seems, it seems in a way a little bit... Um... I don't know, how can I describe it? It seems a little bit too obvious in a way. Like he's really pushing the point very oh, yeah, obviously. Absolutely. I mean, if I, rightly as you say, like reading it with a modern, with or looking at it with a modern eye, now in 2020, I can look at this and see, read the, the message that's in there. It must have been super obvious for somebody yeah, in 1680 absolutely. Absolutely. looking at this. I believe because the, the, the topic is still valid. I mean, that's true. It's yeah. a bad behavior for us today, and it was a bad behavior in the 17th century too. Mm. Just the weight of it is is maybe a bit different. We could say it's kind of a comment on on social mobility. Yeah, also you, you get stuck in that kind of same behaviors. With your yes, parents. exactly. But what we can say is he has actually made 13 different versions of this painting. So of this painting, yes, of oh, this wow. topic. So he the pipe has topic. yes, the pipe topic. Oh, wow. And because you see also how high on demand this was. Mm. So he just kept on painting and selling this. And uh, in every different version, the characters change a bit, the setting changes a bit. It's not the exact copy. Uh, but this one represents a good uh, representative version of the whole series, we can say. That's mm. why we talk about this one now. And this painting is actually today in, in The Hague, okay. in Netherlands, in Maurits Huis. It's one of their nice paintings in their collection. What do you think about the technical details of the painting? Let's focus on the composition a little bit again. Let's follow some, some steps. Okay. Do you think it's very balanced, like we have seen in Renaissance? Is it very symmetrical? I think there's a clear line drawn down the center with the, dro with the dropping of the wine. That, that forms the sort of almost central, mm -hmm. I guess, line down the center Somehow. of the painting. But when you compare the very left of the painting and the very right of the painting, do no, you see true. equal weight? No, I mean, on the right there are... Some figures are actually pushed to the exactly. right of the painting. But there is symmetry in the, the sort of a V shape, I guess, slightly in the... Of course, I mean, there is, there is an arrangement of figures in mm -hmm. any case, so they're not randomly placed, but it's not like Renaissance where the painting is actually... Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not like even and mm. the painter is not trying to balance out a left figure with a, with an equally 
uh, equal figure on the right. right. Instead, he pushes some figure, especially the children, to the corner mm -hmm. and he just cuts them. All of the children, actually. Yeah, yeah more or less. Mm -hmm. And when you look at it from frame perspective, is it, yeah, is it a closed are, frame or no, an no. open frame? Some of them are escaping outside of the frame. Exactly. So yeah. it's an open, open. frame. Mm -hmm. uh, open frame paintings, they generally tell us either direction, directional movement, and mm -hmm. cuts there in the corners, or it can show us a um, sense of dynamism, that's why it's open. And something more to focus on is figures. Mm -hmm. Do they look idealized or do they look natural and realistic? I commented on this already. I think it depends who you're asking you about. You yeah. did. The children seem quite idealized. I think there's oh, very yes. smooth hair and it's very Still, smooth. but look at the little daughter, the little girl. Yeah, I mean, she looks very realistic, actually. Her well, features are very realistic, we can say. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like it? I think she, if that's realistic, then I can feel sorry for her a little bit. She's not yeah, very attractive. Okay, but, but, but she's not idealized at all. Because if you're thinking yeah. that she's not beautiful at all, then she's not that's idealized the at all. Right. Yeah. But I, I mean, some of the other characters, I think the older gentleman looks quite, maybe not idealized, but he looks kind of happy, he's red-faced, he looks sort of He looks healthy. nice, but still, he looks natural. That's that, true. that is what you should see here. Do they look natural or do they look very much studied, posed, mm -hmm. posed mm -hmm. down. If you look at the, the mother, uh -huh. if her face is almost not shown at all. It's completely in shadow from the way that she's yes. turning. Just her neck is visible, yes. the sort of long white neck instead of the, the face. But so let's, let's get to that. When you, when you look at her face and her neck, do you see specific light and shadow effects? Yeah, the light is on the, this side yes. of the face and the, of the yeah, head and neck. And then the face itself is sort of completely in shadow so we can should we, we can that? in general yes we should actually mm -hmm. because in general we can see that there is prominent light and shadow effects in the painting mm -hmm, from the window yes from mm -hmm. the window you get the light and this is one directional light mm -hmm. single direction and then this light is put on all the objects and the figures and it's, yeah, it's quite hear. prominent yeah you mm -hmm. see a lot of shadows and as you go out towards from left to right you see the figures get darker and darker mm -hmm. so there's very prominent light effects which you see in in baroque mm -hmm. this is a baroque painting it's okay. a genre painting though but it's from the baroque period so the but later baroque 7, 16 1670 is towards the end of baroque we mm -hmm. can say because baroque ends somewhere around 1700s okay 1700 it ends we can say technically so uh but this is this comes from the north as well so it's not this typical southern baroque that we see in caravaggio mm -hmm. like very light and shadow dominant. Yeah, it's not true. like that, but it still has the light and shadow effect that we don't see that much in Renaissance. So it's a Baroque painting. That's all for today for Jan Stan's painting As the Old Sing, so Pipe the Young. Thank you very much for watching us. Stick around for more idiots questions about fine art and stay tuned for Art Talks for Beginners. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.